Liza. Thank you for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Allison. I am really, really excited for a talk about today's topic. I have my dog mug for anybody who's watching us here. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so today's topic is about owning a dog and navigating the the you know neighborhoods and things like that and buildings when you're renting or when you're buying. Uh, because there are some caveats to owning a dog in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area that can sometimes make make things sticky for somebody who's moving here. And um, just as a personal note, obviously, you and I have covered this offline. Dogs are like my number one love outside of family and friends. Yes. Uh, I'm a huge big time foster. I fostered about 20 dogs alone last year. Um, and I just absolutely adore doing it and working and helping animals find new homes. So thank you in advance for all that you do. Thank you. Um, but, you know, so the pandemic happened. Everybody's working from home this last year. Yes. And everybody all of a sudden wants a dog, which was great, I think, <laughs> generally yeah. speaking. Um, yeah. It was good because a lot of dogs found homes. We've probably, a lot of us have um, seen news stories how shelters were empty. They couldn't, you know, Right. give dogs away fast enough, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I ended up having the following kind of conversation that you and I are going to have with a lot of clients because, you know, they lived in rentals a lot of the times and they wanted to foster or they wanted to get a dog and they were like, how do I do this? And so these are clients who maybe I've already had, they're not actively working with me, but they're trying to navigate this, this whole situation. And they came to me because obviously I know dogs. Yeah. So I thought this would be a really great topic for us to cover. Um, particularly for people who are moving either within the area or to the area mm -hmm. who either don't have a dog or, or don't have a dog or do have a dog because it will apply to to both groups. Correct. So anyway, so we can really get into it. And just for everyone who's listening, so they know, we're going to try to cover this from two different angles, from the buying angle and then also the renting angle, because it is a little bit different depending on uh, what your situation is. And I'll just say right now that, of course, any questions that we don't answer, we are happy to answer them um, via email or, you know, yeah, whatever. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know. Let's. Um, so you've been really involved in in dog stuff for a very long time. Uh, what's What well, was the last year like for you? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been with PAW for over four years now, um, but it's at this point my full time job. Um, I am a legal assistant, but I do that, uh, uh part-time and, um, my, we have, we're a smaller rescue. Uh, I'm from partnership for animal welfare, uh, paw, paw, paw. Um, and so my responsibilities are mostly, um, with the dogs, but I also do social media and the outreach coordinator. So I sit on the board and all that fun stuff. Um, so you just wanted to know my involvement, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just so people know kind of like where, you yeah. know, where you're coming from and I'm sure you can, you've seen the huge uptick in ownership of oh, dogs. Pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. During the pandemic. Right. Um, and so I have no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, you've no doubt dealt with this, with these questions for yes. the last however many years you've been involved, because this is right. a very important part of getting fosters into homes is answering these questions yeah. um, or when somebody is adopting. So right. these so are things when, when the pandemic hit our, uh, we're, I hate to be a negative Nelly, but we see so much that it's hard not to be when the pandemic hit and everyone started wanting to get a dog. Oh, you know, I'm home. This is a perfect time to get a dog, blah, blah, blah. Um, we were a little bit skeptical because it's like, great. So what's going to happen when all these people go back to work, then they're all, we're going to have like a mass return. And some places have, um, for multiple reasons that, uh, you know, uh, we could go down that road. We don't need to. Um, but some places have definitely seen a huge return, um, which is a big bummer. Um, some, uh, like ours, I think that we've gotten returns, but it hasn't been like en mass. And I think a big part of that, it's, this is a bummer for the people, but not as bad for the uh, for the dogs is that it's been a slower return. I think we all kind of thought at the beginning of the pandemic, Oh, this will be over in a few months and then we're all going to go back. And it hasn't been like that. So I think people have gotten more used to working some from home working. So it's been for at least our organization, um, you know, not like all these dogs got returned, but now, now that people have gotten vaccinated, they're getting out more, all of that. Our dogs are just sitting like, I mean, it's like night and day. Uh, yeah. I, so it's really, it's a big bummer. 
So to avoid these big bummer situations, because yes. yes, I'm getting emails every week from the organizations that I foster with, like basically saying we're at capacity, you know, no. we need help. And it's, it's sad. So these situations can be avoided oftentimes if people do their homework and they find out yep. what the rules are. And so let's just start breaking them down for people. Mm-hmm. So the first one that comes up, which honestly is the most frustrating and annoying one to me that happens uh, in a, <laughs> that, that happens in this discussion is breed restrictions. Yes. Um, breed restrictions are definitely a thing in this area. Um, we'll get into one particular area in a second, but breed restrictions um, are, they can vary. Honestly, they can vary, but the, the biggest offender of course are pit bulls, which end up being on this list Yes. Which, you know, my personal opinion, there's nothing wrong with pit bulls. If there's a problem with the pit bulls, probably the owner's fault. But mm-hmm. this is not an episode about dogs. Totally. It's about housing and dogs. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, but Prince George's County specifically, since 1997, it's been illegal in that county to own, harbor, sell, or give away dogs that exhibit the characteristics of a pit bull more than any other breed of dog. And anybody who violates this, can face a fine as much as a thousand dollars or six months in jail. And okay. also, I want to add to that: the dog gets taken away, and the dog gets taken away, right? Yeah. So, and so, I, mean, I hate to be crass, but like you've got a dead dog, unless a rescue like ours can, will take the dog. Right. So, okay, if you're moving to the area and you have a dog that is a pit bull mix. <laughs> And it's like a pit bull, then yeah. Prince George's County is probably not the place for you. Right. Um, you know, and so then there are buildings. And so outside of Prince George's County, you're going to see buildings, HOAs, condos and apartments that will have breed restrictions. Again, there are various other ones like we were talking before the episode. Tell me some of the other breed restrictions you see you see frequently. So. First of all, pit bulls, uh, again, like Allison, you just said, we're not going to spend this whole time talking about how pit bulls are fantastic. Go adopt a pit bull. Um, (laughs) um, But they're actually not a breed. Like you can't like look up on the AKC. Like if you look at dog shows, like there's no pit bull. Um, Mm -hmm. They're mixes of different types of dogs. So so the breed restriction list has gotten better. So there will be like Staffordshire Terrier uh, or any mix thereof. But there's also Rottweilers, uh, German Shepherds, um, Cane Corso, uh, like other. It's so if, a, if an I've seen Akitas before. Akitas, Akitas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So your if 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 your whether it's your apartment, townhouse, whatever. If your lease says that um, that there are is a breed restriction list, I promise you, it's not just pit bulls. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I did yeah. not mean to imply that. I'm just saying no, that, you did that it. one's you did yeah, it. yeah. No, there's almost yeah. always that on there, in addition to several exactly. others, which varies. Um, and again, it's usually if it looks <sighs> like them. I mean, and I've heard people, yeah. you know, they they'll get the DNA test, um, which can be helpful. We won't get into that either. Right. <laughs> also, you know, somebody, you know, I've had vets say, you know, this is a a golden retriever mix, but yeah. it looks like a pit bull. You know, yes. I don't want to jump ahead too much, but you just need one or two or four people to be upset with your dog or you and your dog for there to be a problem, which is why we're trying to educate people on this particular episode so that, you know, just Prevent. they don't get themselves in those situations yeah. that can end up being really painful right. for a dog owner and and for the dog, right? I mean, we're clearly yeah. dog people. I like dogs more than humans, basically, but... <laughs> Just kidding, yeah. clients. Yeah. Um, but no. <laughs> yeah, um, no. Love, you. love you. Yeah, but I just yeah. want to make sure, you know, obviously that people are making smart decisions. Okay, so we went through breed restrictions. Um, size restrictions. That's yeah. another one. So this one really breaks my heart also because I love Great Danes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're actually really great city dogs because they are super lazy. Right. And they basically just sleep all day. I mean, obviously they have to be walked and stuff, but like, they're not crazy running around dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you have a size restriction, then, you know, they're not going to fit the bill. I don't see that one quite as often as the breed restriction anymore. I'm not sure anecdotally if you do. I, I have a friend that, uh, is like you, um, both foster and, uh, dog owner and real estate agent. And I don't have, yeah. Uh, and, um, 
I learned from him that DC uh, has way more uh, size restrictions than um, breed restrictions. Whereas in Maryland and I believe Virginia, we see a lot more of the breed restrictions. So the places with the breed restrictions will also have a size restriction. So, but I do, I, and once he said that to me, I did start seeing when I did start doing some research with applicants that I noticed that too, that DC has, is a little bit better with the breeds um, and they just stick with size. Size, weight. So kind of it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's usually like 50 pounds or. Yeah. I see 25 pounds sometimes, which is tough because yeah, Mm. that's, I mean, that's a pretty small dog. And also I just feel like it's a weird weight to pick because you have a lot of dogs in this weird, like 20 to 45 pound range. Uh And so, you know. I'm like, okay, put your dog on a diet or something to get into the building. But I'm I mean, also like, if you have a 30 pound dog, no one's going to know that you're 30. Like, you know, like I'm not advocating for lying at all. Like it's actually the opposite, but yep. I'm just saying, I think the weight is a little bit harder to enforce. Well, I mean, all of this honestly could be hard to enforce because a dog can look like, right. you know, like with genetics, right? Like yep. this is also not a science podcast, but like, you know, you can look like something and it's not like, you know, hundred yeah. percent in your genetics. So anyway, yeah. Um, okay, so let's go on. So this is something to consider from both owning and uh, renting as noise transference. So if you're in anything other than a single family house, or I guess even if you are in a single family house and you've got lots of people in your house, but yeah. you can't get kicked, out, get kicked out for that, you'll just get in a fight with your family. Right. But noise transference, <laughs> <been a> part. <laughs> yeah. like small dogs might make just as much noise, m- much as much noise, sorry, as a large dog, if they're running mm-hmm. around and they're jumping up and down. Um, very yappy. Yep. Um, large dogs will just have a heavier gait, right? They're yeah. bigger. Um, so this is something definitely to be considering as well. Um, I will make a quick note that um, a lot of buildings in the area, specifically DC, will have floor covering rules such that you should cover X amount percent of the floors in carpets to avoid noise transference, it's usually 80%. Um, You know, I have yet to meet somebody who's actually threatened to come in and measure how much of the floor is covered in rugs. And of course, it's a bit of a, talking about another bummer, it's very on trend to have hardwood floors have been for a very while, for a long time now, carpets have not been really in vogue. But um, so, you know, for you to have carpets all over or rugs all over is, can you know, take away from that aesthetic, but like that's, but those are the rules. So if you're going to get called out on noise, at least from top to bottom from floors, that's something that you need to be prepared to do. Um, and they can absolutely call you out on that. Um, side to side noise is a completely different thing. So, (laughs) so we're talking about like barking, yipping, yapping, things like that. When doorbells are ring, you know, like that's, that's a big one for me when the doorbell rings my, my dog, my house shakes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So finding out what the noise rules are in your building and are there quiet hours? I see that much less, but there are some associations and buildings that have quiet hours, um, which of course, like we're, let's take a step back for five seconds. We're looking at all of these rules as if you've got somebody who's actually going to hold you accountable to all of them. Right. (laughs) Right. Like, I mean, yeah, I, and I, and I default to a place of assume somebody might do that. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because somebody yeah. absolutely can. You just need one person to be mad, either reasonably mad or they're just mad about something else and are taking it out on you and your dog or whatever. Like, but if a rule is there, you have to assume at some point it can be enforced. Right. And so it might sound silly. You might say, oh, who's actually paying attention to a noise ordinance? Just wait. Cause it'll happen no, at or, some point. Or people, or people, I mean, again, we're talking about noise, but you're absolutely right. Just wait, whether it's the Brie, uh, oh, we have 10 pit bulls in, in this apartment. Well, I'm sorry. Your rules are what your rules are. All you need is a neighbor to complain or whatever. So I completely agree with you. Yeah, this is, it's, it, this comes up so often with like my sellers, for example, I ask them about the, the, the restrictions that they have, just the general restrictions. And they say, well, they're this, but this always happens here. And I'm right. like, that's great. But if I'm a buyer's agent, I'm not like, well, wink, wink, you can get past this. Cause like, what if that doesn't start, what that stops happening in six months or something like you're just, I feel like you're setting yourself up. Then then you're in landlord tenant dealing with, with a whole nother situation. Yeah. Or worse, you own it. 
I mean, if you own the place, right, and, right. Um, I mean, that's even, that's even yeah. worse. Oops. I and just bought a, I just bought a million dollar condo and I've, yeah. you know, I've got a dog problem. Yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. So going down our list. So separation anxiety. So yes. this kind of, kind of goes with the noise thing, right? Exactly. Um, um, so separation anxiety, um, <laughs> now with the pandemic is even a bigger problem, which we've been trying to like throw a bunch of articles and stuff at people because, you know, you, you, you're, even if you're home with your dog that you've had for years and your dog has never exhibited separation anxiety, they are used to you being home. So you cannot just leave and expect your dog to be fine. Um, so if you live in a single family home, like you said, it's not as big of a deal if your dog is like sitting by the door barking and crying or whatever. You, you That's horrible for your dog and you want to find better ways to help your dog cope with that. Don't just leave, like I said. But in terms of neighbors and noise, it's a big issue if you live in an apartment or a townhouse. Um, if you adopt or fo- you know foster a dog that already has separation anxiety, um, separation anxiety, I would say, is probably one of, if not the hardest thing in dogs to train out of, because it's, it takes so, it takes so much patience, patience. And it's like, if you go like a little bit too far with your train, then you got to go back. If, if, you know, it's, it's just a process. And so it takes a lot of patience. And if you live somewhere, yeah, I know it's really sad. Sad. It's so sad. (laughs) Um, but you know, I've had people call me and they're like, Hey, look, I've had this dog for a week. And like, my husband and I work part, like full time. Uh, we, we don't have time to like practice leaving for five minutes. And I'm like, look, uh, this is what you have to do. You made this commitment. You know, this is what I suggest that you do. This is the training. And, you know, I suggest things like frozen Kongs and stuff to keep the dog um, occupied. And now I'm getting into training, which is not the point. The point is these dogs make noise when they have separation anxiety. So It's a big problem if you live somewhere where neighbors can hear, because not only is it sad for your dog, it's really sad for your neighbors that are constantly hearing your dog crying and barking. Yeah, of course. We're, I mean, we've so far been really going uh, about this episode as um, from the viewpoint of the people who have the dogs. Yeah. The fact is the neighbors who don't have dogs or aren't into dogs, it's also not fair to them. You're right. To be hearing noise and all that. Like everybody should be able to peacefully or it's empty, you know, I coexist. children. Sorry to all the kids out there. And if and if and if someone moved in next door, I live in a townhouse. If someone moved in next door to me with a newborn that was crying at all hours, I, I would lose. You'd my be mind. frustrated. Yeah, you'd be frustrated too. Yeah. Okay, so, going yeah. down our list because we could. We're we're going to end up having the longest episode known to man. Okay, reactivity to other dogs and people. Um, so elevators, hallways, etc. Yes. This is huge. Yeah. This is big because we're just talking so far about living in your own home, in your own box, if you will, right? Yep. And then and the barking and the noise. But now we're talking about shared Leaving. places. Yeah, yeah, shared places and things that yep. people can't you can't just turn the music on to a, to drown out the noise or whatever the case may be. So, yeah. um this is where we start getting to the nitty-gritty of the dog that you decide to get to foster is that making sure you understand what your options are. So, Hey, I'm getting a dog that has a troubled past. You know, I have time to train this dog and work with this dog. This dog is a sad story, but it might take a little bit more time. I live on the eighth floor. Yeah. So I'm, I'm probably thinking to myself, well, my outs to get this dog out are the elevator or I'm walking eight flights. Yeah. Now, I mean, I guess you can walk eight flights. Yeah, you can walk eight flights all the time if it's okay for you and you're a dog. But, you know, like this is something to consider. We're not saying it's a hard no, but these are like you're thinking about this kind of thing because what if the dog doesn't react well in the elevator to people or dogs? Or, and and no, it's not, you're right, it's not a hard no, except when it is. Like I, I'm, I would say I'm not as strict as it gets. Like I'm, I think that we need to give people chances and everything someone can can apply for one of our dogs whether it is to foster or to adopt and like have a fabulous application fantastic vet check, whatever like i want to give them a dog but if they live on the 8th floor and they want to adopt one of my dogs i have a dog right now that you know for reasons that i won't get into went after a much smaller dog and injured that dog luckily that dog is okay yes but 
he would be a dog that if he was to go to an apartment, number one, I don't think an apartment would let him be there because he has gotten in trouble with animal control. But number two, yeah, he, anyway, he's the sweetest dog, but just has a little bit of issues with other dogs. Um, I would not want to risk it. I mean, literally, unless it was like a dog trainer that I trusted, you know, someone that could muzzle train him. I mean, it has to be someone that's willing to take the step. So I guess you're right that it's not a hard no. It would be, I don't feel comfortable doing that and setting the dog up for failure unless you are prepared to muzzle train him, make sure that you're like, you know, the right things to do. If someone's coming off the elevator with it, you ought to walk away, you know, these things that you have to consider. Yeah, I have, um, I mean, I don't want to get into too, too much, but I have a really sad story of a neighbor who saw this dog who was like, he was, he was with a homeless person in the street, kept passing him. The homeless person kept saying, will you, will someone please take my dog? Someone please take my dog. Someone please take my dog. And so he did. And he said, okay. So he adopted this dog and this dog was adorable on his own, but super not okay with other dogs. He ended up, this other dog ended up biting my dog's nose through a fence and um, it was like, you know, it's, this is why you need to consider like where you're living, what you're doing, you know, yeah. the kind of dog that you're getting. And then, you know, he wasn't prepared. The owner was not prepared to do all of the training that needed to be done. Yeah. He thought, oh, the dog just needed to be walked and like have a warm place to sleep. And it was like that times yeah. a lot more like yeah. needed, you know, probably needed to have some professional training. I mean, I think every dog should get professionally yes. trained and most rescues will actually require that you do basic positive, training. Uh, yeah. Like yep. not positive, uh, reward based. Not, yep. Yeah. And so anyway, um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, so for sure we're on the same page with that. Okay. And the last thing say before, um, I know we're taking forever, but um, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> you brought up the fence thing and I, even just something as simple as a privacy fence for dogs that are reactive. Right. So, um, everything that you just said and also things around the house that you can do, like get a privacy fence if you live in a single family home. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one more thing that we're, that we're talking about or thinking about when we're renting or buying specifically are going to be the accidents that can happen with a dog. And I feel like this is like, we can talk about this for two seconds because everybody, that's the stuff you think about. Yeah. You think about the fact, okay, my dog's going to pee on the floor if it's a puppy or maybe even if it's not a puppy and it's getting used to this and like yeah. it might chew something and scratch. Like you think about that. But all we're encouraging you to do right now is just think about what is going to happen with a security deposit, you know, what the rules are in a building if you, you know, if something were to happen. It's, this applies mainly more to to rentals because if you own a place, then you're owning it and you're probably going to fix it. I mean, I would hope you're going to fix your own place, but I guess you have a right to just leave it if you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So if you um, are renting, then obviously you're going to want to figure out before they're contacting a you, Liza, before they're calling you and yes. everyone's getting invested in a particular dog or any dog that they're going to to get or foster. And before you're making those phone calls, is do the due diligence, yes. ask the questions, think it through. Getting a pet, specifically a dog, is not something you do on a whim. It's right. not something you just go, oh, you know what? Hey, I woke up today and I want a dog. It's like, mm, hit the awesome. hit the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Figure out if this makes sense for you in your life. And it very well may. And truly, I hope it does for most people because I think that it's a rewarding and awesome thing to do. However, it's like having a child. You need, you should. I'm just going to say, like, it through. As, as much as you would think about adopting a child. Yes, exactly. This is a member of your family. Yeah. And, and we were talking offline about this. Um, and I, I don't know if you wanted to bring it up, but I'm bringing it up. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, about what happens, you know, if it doesn't work out. Obviously, if you're fostering, it's a little bit different than if you're adopting. Our We require that the dog come back to us, even if it's years and years later. That's our requirement. But you have to consider, I mean, these are these dogs don't just like, aren't just like born in our care. Like they have been through, like, we have a dog right now who um, is from Puerto Rico and was found in a vacant lot with a hard chain. I mean, he has scars on it's a whole thing. So he's found that way miserable on a, a chain that's too big for him. He's taken to a shelter there, then get stuffed in cargo on a plane to us. Now he's a, in a kennel. For, so then he goes to someone else's house and you hope that's his last stop. But if yeah. it doesn't work out because the people messed up, because they aren't prepared to to deal with just him being a dog and whatever comes with that, then he's back with us and he's just worse off. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No. Yep. I know I'm with you. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so if you're renting, you're asking the questions. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. You're asking questions no matter what. But if you're buying, if you're buying specifically in a condo or an HOA, all of the rules that we're talking about will be outlined into the condo or the HOA documents. And just as a as to put my realtor spin on everything, because this is a real estate podcast, you have three days for an existing construction or 15 for new construction to go over condo docs. And you can walk away from the contract, no questions asked, if you see something in those condo documents that don't work for you, because you're not going to change the rules of the building just because you're buying there. Now, here's my thing. Hopefully, you know the answers to those questions before you go into it. If I have a dog, I'm not waiting to go under contract and sending an earnest money deposit check of $50,000 before I find out if I can bring my dog with me. Right. Um, you know, so I would say make sure you're asking up front. And, and frankly, a good listing agent should be asking those questions to their sellers before so that they can answer those questions up front as well. But you do have times should... For some reason, somebody give you the wrong information and you see that there is a 25 pound weight limit and you have a Great Dane, it might be very sad for you to leave that contract, but you know, it's more you, sad to dump your dog. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, so, so you do have that, that right yeah. in those outs. So we can ask real quick by just me talking about a question that I've heard, um, from some friends and clients over the last kind of couple of years. So for people who are living in an apartment, um, do you tell your leasing management if you're fostering? Uh, I absolutely. Yes. yes. That's a hard yes. Um, it's a hard yes. Yeah, a hard yes. And so the, the, the big question then was, do they charge you a fee if you don't already own a, fe- a pet? Because most rentals have a pet, you know, rental amount or a deposit. Yeah, a pet deposit. Yeah. And your answer well, was. My answer is yes. Um, I, the, I've never heard of a management company going, oh, it's okay, since you're not going to keep the dog. Yeah, the damage that may, be, that may be done, the dog doesn't know that you're not keeping them. Yeah, so right. whether you're fostering or adopting, assume that there will be some type of a deposit or fee, like you said. Right. And the yeah. charge obviously can vary depending on the building, what they normally charge. So asking what those fees are is something important. Um, somebody asked if, they, if a pet rescue would write a letter on their behalf of the foster parent explaining that it's a temporary visitor and this could this letter remove the pet fees and you and I talked offline about this yeah. and you said you'd be willing to write the letter I but write a letter saying like this is what this person is going to be doing for us but I don't think that I would provide any information to the management company that they wouldn't already know and I don't, don't think it would help to waive any type of costs yeah i i mean i have to agree with you on that one i mean yeah. a lot of a lot of places are foster to potentially um, to place in that home. People will foster, and if they fall in love with the dog, they will foster fail, as we call it, and then they'll yeah. keep the dog. So, you know, from a management perspective, they're not going to keep track of which dog is a foster versus which dog is, you know, whatever. Um, and again, it hurts hurts their building anyway because the dog. It doesn't matter. The dog's going to go to the bathroom, and they're going to chew. They're going to scratch, whether they're your foster or whether they're your own dog. Yeah. It's irrelevant. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that are most of our questions for today, though. I'm sure we could ask and talk about a million other things. I mean, this is a, obviously a very passionate topic for both of us. Um, yeah. I'm going to invite anybody who listened to this episode who has any additional questions to reach out to me. I can always push people to you or anybody else if they have any specific questions about anything we talked about today. We would love to help people with this. Um, these are my two passions combined, real estate and dogs. Uh, so, yes, I so, love it. Uh, so anyway, so thank you so much for coming on and talking about this me. very important topic. Um, and I will uh, make sure to send people your way should they want to foster or adopt um, in addition to lots of other organizations. And uh, thanks again. Thanks. Thanks.